How does the rural-urban divide affect Oregon politics and Oregon elections? Well, it's a part of a national trend. In fact, it's part of an international trend because it was a factor in elections in France recently as well. But what occurs, I think you've got two sets of people who are demographically and economically and culturally very different, and it's becoming increasingly in that manner. More often than not, people in rural areas are involved in agriculture, small business, uh, extractive industries, and um, more often than not, those have been declining, at least in terms of employment for some time. I'm not sure necessarily they produce less, but they're declining in employment. And so what we're finding is that most of the smaller towns increasingly have a very large senior citizen population, and the number of young people in many of those places simply move on. The cities are very different. Uh, they're magnets for people, uh, not only immigrants, but also younger people. Portland is astonishing. You used to walk the streets of Portland, the number of younger people that are there, that are in their 20s and 30s. Uh, and so I think you're seeing uh, sort of a self-sorting in people who are more urban-oriented, more liberal in their views are attracted. Also, uh, there's a lot of immigration into Oregon from the rest of the country, not elsewhere, but a lot of people are moving in from some of the Rocky Mountain states, are moving into Oregon, regaining population in that regard. And I think a lot of the people that are coming in are, uh, for the most part, uh, attracted to the urban lifestyle. So I notice um, I went to a high school reunion about three years ago, 50th, <laughs> first time I'd seen my high school class, and I notice it's very different. The people who often went to college no longer live in Wyoming. The people who didn't go live in the same hometown again. Uh, and there was a difference in terms of culture, economics, income, attitudes. It's, it's very intriguing. So um, I think this is what's going on. I think it's a national trend. Um, the cities are gradually getting larger. The small towns are s gradually getting smaller. And I think you're seeing a, a change in culture. A number of people in rural areas seem to see there's a world out there they don't understand. And so that, I think, is, is what's going on. I think Oregon reflects that. I think we're seeing that um, the Republican Party has clearly become the party that's appealed to white rural America. The Democratic Party is increasingly the party that appeals to cosmopolitan urban areas. And both of them seem to be declining in, in other areas. And I think there's another factor, too, that I'd like to bring in. And that is that um, we are seeing what I think is a nationalizing of both political parties. Um, when I say nationalizing, that means that they are following along a national pattern of values. Uh, our political system is set up in which the states run elections. Most offices are at the state level. And for many, many decades, the political parties would position themselves ideologically so they were competitive in their states. The Democrats would be as liberal in a state as they could be competitive. The Republicans would be as conservative in a state as they would be competitive. But they were always competitive. I grew up in Wyoming. The Democrats did very well. Um, I remember one time the Democrats, in fact, had one Senate seat, U.S. Senate seat. They controlled for 10 consecutive elections with what would probably be described as a sort of centrist national Democrat. Uh, but that was liberal for Wyoming. Uh, people like Nelson Rockefeller could get elected governor of New York. Now, by national Republican standards, he was very liberal, but by New York standards, he was sort of a moderate. And that happened time and time again. Now I think what you're finding is that the Democratic Party is a universally liberal party and the Republican Party is a universally conservative party. And it just finds that the Republican areas become more Republican, the Democratic areas become more Democratic. And it's just uh, moving in that direction. One thing I, I just a little anecdote here. Historically, New York State has gone Democratic in presidential elections because of New York City. Right now, in the last several presidential elections, if you simply removed the vote of New York City entirely, the Democrats would still carry the state. They didn't even need New York to carry New York. It, 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 the rest of the state is that Democratic. And um, that, that is, um, you know, Utah as well. You could remove Provo from the entire mix, center of the Mormon church, and the Republicans still carry Utah. And so I think we're seeing more of that.